So we all wanna become better jazz improvisers and we wanna become better quickly. We wanna take those kinds of solos that when we hear them, we're like, yes, that was awesome. I wanna play and sound just like that. But how do we get there and how do we get there faster. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you what's worked best for me and I think will work really well for you too. That's coming right up. What's up, Brent here from LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. Thanks for being here. If you've never subscribed to the channel before, please do so at the button below. I'm outside right now here in my neighborhood in New York City. It's a nice day. I couldn't stay inside, so shooting from outside here and excited to talk about what I think is the fastest way to improve as a jazz musician. But of course, this is just my opinion today. So what I wanna hear from you in the comments below after you're done listening to this video is how do you think one can improve quickly as a jazz musician and become a better jazz improviser? All right, so without further ado, I'll just go ahead and tell you what I think it is. Learning jazz solos by ear, in my opinion, is the fastest way to improve as a jazz musician. When we learn jazz solos by ear, we are learning jazz language. And at the same time, we are improving our ear. So if I wanna learn how Sonny Rollins approached a tune, I can go ahead and learn that solo, get so much out of understanding how he approached that solo, and in the meantime, learn micro pieces of jazz language, such as jazz licks over two, five, one chord progressions or other important chord progressions. But by going through this process, we're really getting intentional listening going on, we're really getting inside how that musician played and we're learning so much by getting the full scope of things and now this really worked for me you know I spent an entire year learning 32 bars of a solo every single week for one year now you don't have to do that much I had a lot of time on my hands it was in between high school and college that I did this and I had a lot of time to practice and play but during that year my jazz playing skyrocketed and I became a way better jazz improviser just from going through this process now, I know you also might be thinking, well, Brent, this seems like to be a lot of work. How is this faster? This doesn't seem like any shortcut here. It's hard to learn things by ear. It's hard to go through a process like this, and I totally understand that. But sometimes when we put hard work, when we really get a little bit tedious about things, on the other side of that is where the biggest growth comes out. And many of my 30 Steps to Better jazz playing students will affirm this, because this is something we do in that course, and I hear in the community all the time, people that have never learned a jazz solo by ear, or, or nothing by ear at all, and they're going like, wow, like the improvement is absolutely massive that I've had just by going through this process step by step. So now that you know what I think you should practice to improve your jazz solos quickly, let me share with you my process for learning a jazz solo by ear. And, and first step is really just to use what I call the list process. Now I've done a whole video on that, I'll link that up in the card above, but basically the list process is an acronym, it stands for listen, internalize, sing, and transfer. We need to listen to it so many times that we know it, internalize it so that it's just inside of our being. We need to be able to sing it, which proves that we've internalized it. And then finally, we need to transfer it to our instrument. But the second step is really to use what I call batch learning. And so what we do with a jazz solo is it can be very overwhelming. You might look at it and be like, wow, this is way too much information. But if you take one practice session and only learn two to four bars, and then the next practice session review and do two to four bars, and the next one only two to four bars or the next phrase, whatever it happens to be, this is how we can really start learning and getting the very most out of every single bar that we actually learn. So by doing this batch processing system, we can really internalize the music and take what might be an overwhelming goal, break it down so that we can actually get the very most out of it. So after you've gone through this process and you've learned the entire solo, the next step that I would say to do is to really find those licks or those pieces of small musical information within the solo that you really like, that you really want to investigate a little bit further. And then at that point, you want to analyze how that actually works. So let's just say that it's a Sonny Rollins solo, and there's this lick that he plays over a 2-5-1 chord progression, and it's really awesome. You want to learn how to play that more. You want to really dig inside how to do it. You might discover that he's kind of playing some altered notes over the dominant seventh chord. You might discover that he's outlining a Dorian, or he's targeting the ninth of the chord. What 
whatever it happens to be, you want to really analyze that to understand that. And then after you've done that, you want to internalize that even further. And the best way that I know to internalize small fragments of musical information is to take it through all 12 keys. So maybe it's a 2-5-1 in B flat major, we'll take that into E flat, take that into D flat, to A flat, to C, to F every single key and by the time you're done doing that you're gonna know that lick so well but not only that you're gonna know that lick within the context the musical context of the actual solo you're gonna understand how Sonny Rollins even got to that point all right so this is what we do we learn the whole solo in batches we use the list process and then finally we learn licks in all 12 keys so this is my challenge for you this week is to discover a solo that you want to start learning and maybe it's only two courses of it doesn't have to be the whole thing but find one that you want to start learning and then go through this process and actually do it and then at the end of it report back and see how it actually went for you and see if you really do feel like you learned a lot. And I guarantee you the more that you do this, if you did this for six months, for example, I mean, you would be a way better jazz musician. I can almost guarantee you that. Of course, if you want help with any of this, I did mention my 30 Steps to Better Jazz Playing course. That's just one of the aspects that we cover in the course. So you can go to 30 steps to better jazz playing.com and check that out right there. All right, so again, this is just my opinion. I wanna hear from you. How do you think you can improve quickly as a jazz improviser? Leave that in the comments below. Would love to hear from you. All right, and really quickly, as a little bonus, I just wanna give you a really great rhythm exercise that you can practice today. What I want you to do is I want you to set your metronome on for beats two and four. And then you see that like button at the bottom of the video right here? I want you to hit that like button on the and of four. And then you'll have done your rhythm practice for the day. All right, and of course, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Don't want you to miss out on anything that's going on here. And I'll see you in the next video.